Okay, so this is the Belizean side going to Guatemala to visit Tikal. You just have to book a tour for one or two days or whatever you need. Right here, they exchange money before entering. Uh, this is the line, which is normally packed, but now because they just recently opened the border, it's not full at all. First, you go through the pass, uh, the COVID check, sorry, then the passport check, and that's it, you're in. Normally, this is packed with people, and here's where you buy your little snacks and whatever you need to hit the road, and that's it, you're in. It used to be uh, a bit dangerous to cross with a Belizean taxi or car, so that's why normally if you book a tour, you're going to change vehicles once you cross the border. And that's it, you drive through the country, which is very nice, and you see how people live pretty locally. We just got the one day tour for about 120 US dollars, but you can get a longer tour and for example stay in Flores, which is a very nice town, very typical and touristic, and you know, you could adapt it to whatever you want to do. You can also camp at the site and whatever you need. And like always, um, the tour guys will stop at places for you to buy souvenirs and stuff. We just stopped at this one because we told them that we didn't want to stop and it was pretty cool because it had like the little miniature um, maya empire and all of the um, ruins and and pyramids that were that are actually still there but they have to be uncovered but it was pretty cool to see and you didn't have to buy anything we went to the bathroom which is very necessary i went across the street i bought some water and you kind of take a look at what the little towns look like and then from there you just head over to Tikal, which is kind of like Jurassic Park. So yeah, after you go through the jungle, um, you get to the parking lot and you you will be assigned a tour guide to enter the park. Um, you could also go on your own, but we thought it was nicer to get somebody to explain everything. And there's also a campground where you can like camp. This is a UNESCO World Heritage Site, so you know, it's very important. And the guy starts talking about everything, like here the fauna, termites, how they actually help the tree. Uh, instead of what I actually thought, which is that they eat the tree, they actually eat the dead wood, which is very interesting. You see little, um, what do you call these guys? They're kind of scavengers and they're very funny because they walk in, in groups and you don't see them at first, but they're just, they just eat bugs, you know, and they're just everywhere. Probably when it gets more full, of people and tourists they're not that much around but especially don't feed them because it's really nice to just see them eat bugs and you just go on and the guy is talking and what was really interesting is here for example you see how they're uncovering another pyramid and that's the thing about it that it was all undercover because this is of course we're talking about the beginning of uh, the first century right because the thing is that the Mayas kept moving either upwards or in other parts of the of Central America because they were, of course, they would live by wherever there was water. And as water kept on receding or moving to other places of Central America, they would just leave everything there and just build the camp again in another area. Here you can see how they lived. Um, the houses, kind of the rooms, these are actual rooms. And, you know, just um, the most important would kind of have these type of houses and the other ones would just live spread out. But the whole Maya, as you saw in the little miniature one, the empire extends to a pretty long area. So this is the main plaza. Uh, it reminds me a little bit of the movie Apocalypto and you can just imagine the people here because the main purpose of the plaza is just to kind of keep the people happy. It would be like maybe like a mall or like, you know, 
nowadays or where people would kind of go to have a good time or like uh, have ceremonial traditions, festivals, you know, or even like selling stuff. Farmers would sell their product and all that. And of course there were like sacrifices and things like that going on. But it's really cool to be here. So as I was saying, they are uncovering temples. This one was the most recently uncovered. And to the right, there's actually a hill that the Chi Taiwanese sorry, have invested into uncovering because apparently it's going to be the highest. Um, you can also see some scaffolding on the right of it. And that is part of the uncovering because they're still kind of uncovering part of it. Uh, these are the stairs from the bottom and right in front as you can see now there's a little a plate where they would do the sacrifices to the gods to keep them happy. So you can imagine how this was back in the day right? This is actually the Tikal temple is actually the tallest pre-Columbian structure in the Americas so it's actually quite important and if you look at it it's a little bit different to the ones in Mexico they all have a little bit of difference because they were moving you know, according to where the water was flowing and all that. And uh, that's where Steven Spielberg came to record the sound of this monkey to make the growling of the T-Rex. So yeah, that was pretty cool actually. Uh, you freak out when you hear the monkey and the tour guide was saying that many people that come camping here and they don't know about it, they actually just leave all their belongings and they start running thinking it's this huge beast or something, which is actually hilarious. So yeah, this is uh, the most important ruins in the area, but when you get there, you'll get a map and you'll see where there's ruins and it, they're just everywhere. And you, if you have time, you should check the, all the other ones out too because it's really impressive and it's very worth it.